In this video, we're going to do a complete review of the Fractal Design Meshify 2 Compact RGB case. I'm going to show you how to build inside of this case in a time lapse video. Then we're going to do thermals and acoustic testing to see just how loud and how hot your system will get in here. We're going to go over just about everything in this video. Then coming up in my next video, I'm going to show you in regular speed how to build inside of this case, how to do cable management, how to flash the BIOS, configure the BIOS, install Windows, and install all of the drivers and updates. More on that soon, but without wasting much more time, let's get started.
Now we're at the point that we're going to be stress testing to see how loud and how hot the system gets. Right now, my house is 70 degrees, but it's struggling to hit 66 degrees. It's the middle of the day and it's real hot outside. So the reason I bring that up is because whatever the temperature is going to be ambient in your house will dictate the temperature inside of your PC. If it's really hot, 80 degrees in your house Fahrenheit, it's gonna be really hot inside of your system. So just keep that in mind. Now with that said, let's get started. So right now my CPU is in the 20s, sitting idle in Windows, and my video card is in the 20s the gpu and the memory is in the extremely low 30s we're just sitting idle in windows mind you moving this around a little bit will affect it a teeny tiny bit but not much so now i want to bring you into some temperatures on the insides checking the video card we can see i'm checking the grill it's in the 25 26 not very hot checking the Plate along the top, we're about 28 degrees, 27. Checking directly behind the GPU, 27 degrees. So everything's pretty cool. We'll check the board itself is 27 degrees, very cool. Nothing to get hot about there. 29 degrees, checking out the heatsink back here. Okay, and then checking out the Arctic heatsink, 23 degrees up here. Now coming around the back, we can see the video card is 24 degrees. I'm just checking for any hot spots, 24, 25, 26. Okay, so that's relatively cool. Back here, the case itself, 25, 24. In the fan. Okay, that's the air coming out is about 24 degrees. Now along the front of the case, we can see we're about 21 degrees, 21, 22 degrees. Remember, the hotter the front is, that's the hotter the air is coming in through the front of the case. This is sucking cool air from the front of the case through the case, and then all the heat's generated in here, and then getting expelled out of the back, and then also getting expelled from the top fans as well. So. We want, of course, the front to be the coolest as possible. Then also, the noise level in here. Thirty-nine to forty-two dB. Here we're about two feet from the PC. Directly behind the PC on the fan. Anywhere from 45 to 47 dB, directly behind the video card. Between 43 and 46 dB. Along the front, between 44 and 46 dB. And at the very top, directly above the fans, Funny, it just started speeding up now. Between 43 and 49, but it's funny, as I brought you up at the very top, it started getting a little bit louder. So now, so now in order to do proper testing, we need to put the, the side panel on. Now we may have to play with that hose a little bit, but it's the first time it's been inside of the system like that, so it has to settle. So we need to figure out if we want it to be up or be down, but we'll leave it like that just for now. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of HW monitor. We're gonna go ahead and open IDA64, tools, system stability, and this is going to stress out the CPU 100%. And I don't really care about those cores. Actually, I care about the cores. I don't care about the SSD. Okay, so we can see there 16, 24 is the highest over here. And let's get started. So I'm going to leave this for half an hour and then come back to you guys.
see it just got a lot louder in that there. All right, so half an hour passed, 50 minutes actually passed. I had to eat some lunch, but we can see now the temperatures are anywhere between 67 degrees and 72 degrees on the CPU. Again, running for 50 minutes. Jumped up to 74 degrees now, but we'll come back here and we'll scan, check for temperatures. 29 degrees coming out of there. So we're still getting relatively cool air coming out from the back on the video card. 27 degrees, 28 degrees, 30. Still cool there. Along the top of the unit, where the heat probably would get mostly expelled from, we can see about 27 degrees, 28 degrees. Not incredibly hot, keeping itself nice and cool. Putting my hand over here, the air still feels pretty nice. Then coming along the front of the system, we can still see the air is in the, let's say 23, 22 degrees, 24 degrees. Everything is still nice and cool. And now from about a foot away, between 43 and 45 dB, still pretty quiet. Then directly behind the fan, Sixty-four to sixty-seven dB, so it's still pretty quiet. Not incredibly quiet, but this is the rear. We expect this to be a little bit louder. Then, of course, along the top, between sixty-three and sixty-seven dB, and the front of the system. between 49 and 52 dB. We have to remember the fans are directly in front of this. So the fans, of course, will get a little bit louder. So now we've done CPU testing. We've seen the CPU raise maybe about to somewhere in the 70s. Still doing pretty well considering it is a 280 millimeter liquid cooling unit. Now, let's see about the GPU. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and run a stress test on TimeSpy Extreme. We'll do 99 passes and we'll run a stress. And right up here, you can see the GPU temperature, percentage use, speed, and then everything's kind of scrunched up in here, but we'll see it all in a second. So let's get started. All right, we can see the GP running at 100%. Right now at 35 degrees, the CPU, the GPU is at 55 and rising. So we'll leave it here for half an hour and we'll come back. So now we can see running Time Spy for a little over 30 minutes. Hottest the temperature has gotten about 77 degrees. That's not incredibly hot when you're fully stressing the GPU. That's running well. This is also not running any sort of fan curve on the GPU. If you run a fan curve, you can even have the GPU run even lower than that. Maybe a little bit louder but still lower than that. And so that's running incredibly well. Incredibly well, especially because we have the radiator blowing mildly warm air over it. And it's only a little bit of air as well. Now, mind you, if you're going to be doing some overclocking, this might not be the best configuration, but as it is right now, this is running beautifully. 
Now, I do want to mention the noise level. 43, between 43 and 45 dB. And that was about a foot away. Now, directly behind the video card, between 61 and 66 dB. So obviously right here is going to get the hottest because we're directly behind the video card. Up here, it's gotten between 51 and 53, not very loud. Sorry, 51 and 63. Now just above the computer, between 48 and 52 dB. Now, feeling it right here, it is starting to get relatively warm. Mind you, we've run the CPU 100% and the GPU at 100%. And still, even though it is slightly warm, it's not incredibly hot. And then up here at the very front, between 51 and 55 dB, so still relatively cool. So I've been building inside of the Fracto Design Meshify 2 compact RGB case now for quite a few days. I've been stressing in it. I've been doing so many things inside of it multiple times, unfortunately, <laughs> and fortunately, all of my own doing, of course, to bring you the biggest and best review I could for this case. I love this case. I think it's awesome. It's incredibly tiny, for what it can house. A 3080 Ti FTW3 with a liquid cooled CPU, 280 millimeter liquid cooling unit. I think that's pretty awesome. You can fit so much in a little teeny tiny case. As you saw earlier, you can barely fit your finger or maybe you could fit your finger in a, maybe a fourth of another finger in between the GPU and the liquid cooling unit, but that's incredibly tight. And the CPU also stays incredibly cool and quiet, as you can see. I'm incredibly surprised at how much they can do with such little real estate. Now, unfortunately, you cannot put, I want to say, a good liquid cooling unit at the very top. The highest you can go is 240 millimeter. Now, if you were using maybe a 5900X processor, that might work great. Or maybe a 12600 processor, that might work great as well. But if you want to go as high as the 12900KF, currently for processors that are out you're going to have to move the liquid cooling unit to the very front like i did here the price is amazing i believe it was 120 dollars usb type c comes with four fans four 120 millimeter fans rgb as well and can even fit a full atx board not eatx but the case is going to have to be a lot bigger if you're going to do that now mind you on the storage side because we have to remove that cage we're not able to put as many drives. You are able to seat those drives down here as well with those cages instead of just leaving it open. So you do have some space, two in the back, maybe two up here, but still you drop some space. And then up here, to me, it just wouldn't look as nice. Now, if you had a smaller power supply, you can fit a whole lot more, but you know, it is what it is. The temperatures all stayed great. The case looks beautiful, has every single thing you need out of it. For only 120 bucks, I give this case two thumbs up all the way. I think it's a great case. So while in this video, I did show you how to build a PC, it was all super quick. Now, if you want to see the complete build video, that's coming up real soon. But if you do want to check out everything that comes inside of the box, make sure you check out this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do leave them down below. I respond to everything. This is Iggy with This Bites for You Up. See you guys.